stacked in this tackle box with maybe one or two exceptions. I've got just about every ultralight that Rebel has ever made. And my goal today at this little micro pond, which is teeming with some really angry green sunfish, is to try to catch a fish on as many of the different Rebels as I can. Retro bassin, kicking some ass and wearing rayon jackets. Thinking about Bill Dance, watching these fish prance through my Ray-Ban glasses. Ain't nothing better than 40-year-old lures coming off of Zepco 33. Out on the bass boat, making beer cans float, doing some trespassing. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bassin'. Now that we've done a little mini history on the Rebel Ultralight line, I figured I would load up my Plano Mini Magnum Sidekick Tackle Box with just about as many Rebel Ultralights as I've still got in my collection and hit one of my favorite new little micro ponds. We were at this spot uh, the other week fishing with a four inch slider worm and I had a ton of hits from a new species of fish for me which turned out to be a green sunfish. All said and done, I think I actually ended up getting four or five fish to the bank, and that was on a three-alt bass hook. So I'm really excited to see what these true ultralight baits can do right here. Wow, there are fish busting behind me. This place is wild. I figured it'd be fitting to start out today's Rebel Ultralight Challenge with the first ever Rebel Ultralight that I could find in an old school Bass Pro Shops catalog. Straight out of the 1978 catalog, uh, even though this bait's probably a little bit newer, is an inch and a half Rebel Minnow. This is a nice little floating bait. It is the only one I have, so I hope I don't lose it. In a really nice silver blue back pattern. And, ooh, I think this little one-tenth of an ounce dude is going to get cranked. Because there's already fish boiling right behind me. Oh, I've got a nice pass and he just buried in the weeds. Oh my God. All right, I'm just gonna let this line go slack. I don't know what's gonna happen here. That's a nice little one and a half pound bass though. Oh shoot. My line is slack. I'm hoping he's gonna swim off. I hope he's still hooked. But they just dove right into these weeds and bury themselves and there's just no way I'm gonna be able to get him out. Oh, come on, buddy. Oh, this guy's just so buried. I don't even know what to do. Oh, that's a heartbreaker. That's a nice fish. And it's my only Rebel Minnow. And I just totally ate something right there. Oh, I'm just gonna keep pulling until something breaks. <laughs> well, I got my lure back. I don't think there's a fish on it though. Wow. Oh my goodness. That sucks, but I'm glad to get my only Rebel Minnow back. This has to be one of the most uniquely treacherous places I've ever fished. There is just a ton of really mucky nastiness going on. I don't know if you can see me where I just totally ate it right there, but there is a ton of just this really thick vegetation. And for some reason, these fish know more than I think any fish I've ever seen. When they get stuck with a hook, they go nose first into those weeds as hard and as fast as they can. Uh, I'm 
kind of amazed that I got the lure back. Uh, I'm going to have to retie because I guarantee you this line just got shredded. Oh my goodness. That's uh... <laughs> Then I hooked myself. <laughs> it's going to be one of those days. <laughs> I've only made one cast here and already I am like just totally flustered. Oh my god. <laughs> so I'm going to have to crank down the drag on this thing. Even though it's ultralight, I don't want to do it, but I'm going to have to because I just can't afford to have another fish just go burying the weeds because I'm never going to get them back. Uh, there's our Rebel Minnow. We uh, did have a bent out hook. I'm going to bend that back in right now on the old camera tripod. And hopefully... Uh... <laughs> oh, man. That was nuts. <laughs> I eat it again. Oh my gosh. But there we go. First fish on the old Rebel Ultralight Rebel Minnow. Woo! Nice little green sunfish. I'm surprised he was able to get to it uh, ahead of all those bass because it was a definitely a little wolf pack of bass chasing that minnow. Uh, there we go. Nice fish. Um, <laughs> I'm going to need a shower after this one. All right, I've got a feeling it's going to be that kind of day, so I'm going to uh, hurry up and cut bait or, or cut a lure. We will retire the Rebel Minnow after a successful catch, and now we're on to the next bait. On to the next bait. <laughs> my reel's muddy. I'm muddy. Oh, my goodness. Well, next on the challenge list, straight out of the 1984 Bass Pro Shops Master Catalog, the teeny wee crawl. Uh, this is a neat little bait. I actually ended up ripping this thing open uh, today just for this actual fishing adventure. Here we've got a nice little uh, sort of unique pattern. Really dark on top, brown sides, and nice little red belly. Yeah, this thing's gonna get cracked. <laughs> I'm just gonna have to get whatever fish hits this into the bank as quickly as possible. Otherwise, uh, I will not see this bait again. I horsed him. I horsed him, but I didn't lose my bait. This is seriously like the most intense pan fishing I think I've ever done. Oh my gosh. I feel like these are just like a bunch of like crazy piranhas in there. It is insane. These fish are really aggressive, but they're also really smart and tough to catch. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I'm like shaking. Oh, man. I mean, if I catch like a three pounder, I'm just not even gonna have a prayer of getting that thing in. Ah, there we go. <laughs> uh, not a big one, but a catch nonetheless on the teeny wee crawl. Another little green sunfish. <laughs> oh, man. I feel like I could catch a bigger fish on the green sunfish, but I'm going to keep going because I've got like eight or nine baits to try today, so <laughs> it's going to take a minute. <laughs> there we go. Does that one count? Is that too small? It's too small? All right, one more on the wee crawl, but that's it. <laughs> I'm gonna regret throwing this again, I hope you know. It should have counted, I'm, I'm gonna totally regret this. I don't know if it's because it's so sunny out, but they're definitely not as drawn to the really dark wee crawl as they were to that minnow.
There we go. A little bit better green sunfish on the old wee crawl. <laughs> All right. I think we can uh, put this thing to bed and get on to the next Rebel Ultralight. All right, next on the minnow bucket list of Rebel Ultralights is the next one I remember seeing in the old catalogs, the Teeny Wee Frog. Uh, this is another nice little bait. I think this thing is an inch and a half, uh, you know, one tenth of an ounce thereabouts. And this is a floater crankbait uh, just like the previous two. Uh, I'm real curious to see how this thing does, especially in a little froggy looking pond like this. I got a feeling this bait's gonna get smoked. <laughs> and like most of these, this is the only one I've got. So if I lose this thing on the first cast, uh, get a good look, cause that'll be the last you get. <laughs> and that is how you get it done, son. Another fish on another rebel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm just jumpy. These little hooks scare me. Oh my goodness. So there we go. Uh, that is definitely a qualifying fish on the Rebel Teeny Wee Frog. <laughs> I want to get some of those bass you've been seeing though. Those things look nice. But I'll take this guy. Nice little green sunfish. Can I get him unhooked without the pliers? That'd be like amazing. Oh my gosh. There we go. All right, next bait in the Rebel timeline, uh, at least according to the old catalogs, is this guy, the Crick Hopper, in a really nice uh, natural cricket pattern. Ooh yeah, this thing is gonna get smoked as well. So far, all these baits have been of the floater diver variety. We've got a little change coming up after I get one on this, if I get one on this. If I could actually cast properly. Ah! <laughs> do we need like a retro blooper reel, like Bill Dance style? I think we do. Like a whole, I could probably do a whole VHS video. I am gonna fish this thing um, just like they suggested, which is to basically leave it as a top water, not a crankbait, and just kind of slowly twitch it on the surface, much like a natural cricket would do, right? Cricket's not gonna get in the water and start swimming underwater. It's gonna stay up top and kind of flutter around, and I'm gonna try to do that with this bait. And not fall down the hill in the process. I've been trying to save the perimeter of this bank for as long as possible. It does feel like we've hit a little lull in the action. So I'm gonna move around, probably just over this way, uh, give these fish a little bit different look and try to get one on the old Crick Hopper before moving on to the next baits. Buddy. Woo, big perch of the day, buddy. Yeah, look at that guy. Oh man, he actually just inhaled that crick hopper. Oh my goodness, that's a really good looking fish. There's the fish and there is the bait. We are gonna be one and done on the crick hopper because I've got a bunch of other baits to get to and woo, that sun is just cooking me. But there we are, that is a really nice looking green sunfish on it. I'm kind of glad I got him out of the weeds because he did his best to bury me up and, and break me off. <sighs> now let's make like Bill Dance, get up under a shade tree, think about the next bait and do a little retying. Just did the math, it's four fish down, four to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and brave the sun and try to get these last four bites as quickly as I can. What's interesting about this bait is it is a sinking crankbait. 
And if there's anything I've learned about this pond is that you've got to keep stuff up and out of those weeds. So I'm going to have to fish this a little bit faster than perhaps it's designed for to try to incite, oh, the fish are still busting, to try to incite a strike and then get that fish out of there as quickly as I can. I'm not going to lie to you, I'm a little bit nervous about this one. Oh, that was a bass. And I can't get to him, otherwise I'll wipe out. So, ah. <laughs> Does that count? It doesn't count. You guys are being tough today. All right. <laughs> well, he might have been just a little bit under the, uh, the size limit. Got to go free him, though. There he goes. All right, he's gone. Ah, I missed that one. Rats. This bait is a lot tougher to fish because it sinks. It doesn't stay up on the surface. I've really got to reel it in pretty quickly. I am surprised that it might be inciting a few reaction strikes that I wouldn't get from a really slow, methodical topwater approach. So maybe I'm onto something. Doubtful, but, but maybe. That's another one, he just jumped at the bank. I know, I know, it doesn't count. I get it. <sighs> All right, he's little, but he's gonna count. Uh, green sunfish on the next Rebel. Let's get him unhooked. Oh, it's unnecessary. Back in the shade doing a little retro retie. Oh my gosh, I should wash the fish poop off my glasses. <laughs> the next bait has me excited. Oh shoot. The next bait has me tangled. The next bait has me both excited and a little bit scared. I'm excited because I think that the catter crawler is gonna work awesome here. For one, it is a nice bright white color, sort of a cream color, and these fish have definitely been gravitating toward the lighter shades today. It also has a nice slow sink rate, definitely slower than the last bait, so I can literally work this thing just over the tops of those weeds, see it, and I've got a feeling we're gonna see that little white disappear. Why am I nervous? Well. This has been one of my favorite baits for a long time, and I don't mean this genre of bait, this actual bait. Uh, this bait has been in my collection since, ooh, 1991, 1992, and uh, <laughs> I, uh, I might just be losing her today. I, I hope not, but <laughs> there's a chance. Wish me luck. We moved into a nice little corner here probably about a hundred yards from where we started the day. There's a little bit of deeper water that comes right into this corner. I'm hoping that there's some fish hiding right in there. Oh my gosh, for this place, that's a giant. Look at that, oh my gosh. <laughs> I made the mistake of taking my eyes off the crawl on that one. I looked back in the water and old Mr. Cream Sides had just disappeared. So I set the hook and somehow got this bass out of the weeds before I lost a, uh, an heirloom lure. <laughs> oh my gosh. Woo! 
sun. <laughs> oh, holy smokes, that was uh, that was intense. Uh, well, there's our muddied up caterpillar. This is definitely gonna be a one and done with this bait. I am gonna put that thing in the uh, tackle box and call that guy a win. Nice little pass. <laughs> oh, wow. Let's let him go. All right, took a little sip of soda, cooled off and retied. We are down to two more baits. Next on the list was the Rebel Big Ant and I had it in two different colors. I had a black ant and I had this, a grub colored ant. Seeing the success of lighter colored baits, especially the last Caterpillar catch, I opted for the white. Uh, this thing doesn't sink, but hopefully it can elicit the same sort of reaction as that old Caterpillar. Two more fish. First couple casts, the Big Ant definitely fishes uh, similar to the other traditional floating Rebel Ultralights, with the one exception that it's got a pretty big backside. It's like 36, 24, 36 uh, centimeters. But anyway, but it can cast a little bit further with that extra junk of the trunk. Sunfish. Big sunfish. Little bass. It's funny that sunfish was actually bigger than the bass that I ended up catching. Ah, oh, bass and buds. I'm not gonna ask. That one counts. There we go, uh, official fish on the Rebel Big Ant. <laughs> One more to go. One more lure and this challenge is official. Last lure to catch a fish has got to be the Rebel Bumblebug. One of the newer uh, models in the line and one that is still available today in uh, several different colors. The colors that I have, and we're gonna have to decide here, I've got a horsefly, which is a nice light white color. The bill is a little bit jacked up on this thing, so I'm a little bit nervous to catch a fish on this one. This one may be uh, out of the running. I've got a hornet, kind of metallic yellow. That looks pretty good. Got the bumblebee. I've got the horsefly, and lastly, the ladybug. You know, I think I was would normally go with that lighter white of the uh, hornet, but this is a really nasty pond filled with nasty little animals, and there's nothing nastier I can think of than a big old green horsefly. So this is the one we're gonna go with. Hopefully we get a fish on this, and we can put this episode to bed. You realize that if I left all the footage in of me retying these little lines with these little eyelets, it would be like a four-part mini-series. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> it's like my life is a blooper reel. All right, horsefly, let's do it. Buddy, look at that, another gorgeous green sunfish on the last bait in the arsenal. The old Rebel Bumblebug in a horse fly pattern. The fish of the day came on my own personal 30-year-old Caterpillar. And while I am way too scared to throw that particular bait anymore, I do happen to have one more Caterpillar in a different color. This one in a very clear, earthy-looking earthworm. 
So let's see if we can get a final bonus fish on a catacrawler because that bait is just fishing awesome. It casts really well, but I also like that it sinks down so that fish that might be a little bit scared to hit something on top, especially given these conditions, can still eat it, but it sinks slow enough that I can fish it over top of, honestly, six inches of vegetation rather easily. My reel broke. Oh, my uh, discount ultralight rod finally had enough right when that bass hit. So I just ran up the hill and dragged him on in. So check out that nice little mud bass. Woo, final fish on the old Rebel ultralight. This time that catacrawler did it again. I gotta tell you, I had a feeling that was gonna be a good bait and it 100% turned out to be the bait of the day. Too bad that Rebel discontinued it at some point. And again, if you're gonna get one of these on eBay, you gotta spend like 20 bucks to get one out of the package, unfortunately. But that is the perfect bait for this uh, kind of body of water. And honestly, next time I come back, I'm probably gonna have just that bait on. Woo, he was barely hooked too. There he is. Let's, uh, let's let him go. <laughs> wow, really cool. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this deep dive into the Rebel Ultralight Baits. If you're looking for more old school content, click right here. Otherwise, I will see you guys next Saturday. But until then, keep the carpet side up and definitely fish it old school. <laughs> Look at me, I'm a mess. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bassoon.